Good afternoon. It's really important that if you're going to go wild ice skating that you have all the safety equipment and know how to use it. I think an essential piece of equipment is either an ice pike or ice poles. Both are stout tools that you can use to check for ice thickness and strength. Now, there's a lot of discussion about the benefits of using a pike versus the poles and vice versa. I'm not here to enter into that discussion today. There are no commercial sources of ice pikes on the market today. So I asked myself, well, can you build an ice pike relatively inexpensively that will do the job? And as it turns out, you can. The next few minutes of this video, I will show you how to make an ice pike out of readily available materials that you can find in just about any hardware store and put it together with common hand tools. Let's get going. First, you need a staff. Now, this happens to be approximately five foot long piece of hickory that I purchased at Fortune's Hardware, Tupper Lake, New York. This is a replacement hoe handle. And what's nice about it is that for $11.99, you can get a great piece of hickory, nice straight grain on this. You get a metal ferrule and it's pre-drilled to accept a 3 8 inch rod. In addition to the uh, wooden pike pole, you're also going to need hardware to attach, uh, to create the actual point of the pike and to attach the point to the pole. So here's the two other two items. I got these at Obishan's. This is a galvanized carriage bolt, six inch long. I think it was $1.62. These guys are stainless screws and stainless lock nuts. They were 62 cents a piece and 45 cents a piece. So all the all the stuff I bought so far, this piece of wood with the ferrule, the uh, bolt that I'm going to use for the point and for the fastening equipment uh, comes to about 17 bucks. All right, the beauty of this is that it is pre-drilled, so you can take the bolt, insert it into the hole, and with a little bit of finagling, it goes right down into the ferrule. So I've inserted the bolt into the wooden uh, pole and the ferrule is already attached to the pole so it doesn't come off. So I'm going to drill two holes so I can put those stainless screws through here to, to firmly attach the bolt into the uh, pike handle. And to do that I start off with a uh, by using a center punch That looks good. Now, some of you may not have a tool like this. This is a fancy. If you don't, you can use a nail. I'm going to use an old fashioned center punch here and a hammer and carefully set that. And that actually made a nicer dip. Okay, next step is to drill the holes. So you want to make sure that those center punch holes, those two divots that you put in, um, actually go through the bolt. You don't want it. You don't want this upper one to go past the end of the bolt because you want two screws through the bolt for the most stability and most strength. Now, when you drill this, I've got a little tabletop drill press here. You could do it by hand; it's not a problem. Um, but what I've found is that in this particular case. Because 
if you, if you didn't you you need to use a uh, some type of uh, a shim because if you just laid it like that the screw would go in the drill bit would go in on an angle i'm trying to get it i mean it doesn't have to be perfect but i'm trying to get it so that the screw goes in straight okay so here we're gonna go <laughs> There's nothing like a sharp drill bit. Okay, so now we're going to go to the next, the next bolt or screw hole that we're creating. And this is a little difficult here. Let me think. Yeah, okay, this is fine. This will work. And I'm watching this so I can see that the drill bit is going to go through the bolt. So you need to be careful. You don't want to tilt it so it goes off to the side. You want it to go directly through the center of the bolt hole, of the bolt. put the next uh, next size bit in and drill the redrill these holes all right so I've changed my bit out this is the exact size that I need for the stainless screws to go through and we'll drill out these holes <laughs> Ready to put the bolts in. Okay, so we've drilled the holes. Now we're going to put the uh, retaining screws in. These are stainless steel. You don't have to use stainless steel. They were obviously more expensive than a than a mild steel, but I thought I'd put them in along with the galvanized bolt. There's one. There's two. Now I've got nylock nuts, so we won't need any kind of uh, uh, lock washer or anything. Can put these fellows on. Let's see what we've got here. Okay. There we go. the screwdriver this is how I imagine Bob Dill would do it although he would probably use old Volvo parts 
to make it. one. Let's finish up this second one. There. Okay, next step, cut off the excess bolt and then sharpen the, uh, the pipe pole point. So we're going to use, we're going to cut off these screws with, uh, uh, old school style uh, with a hacksaw instead of an angle grinder Finally, we're going to just touch these up with a, to take any potential rough spots off with a vite, with a uh, file. So now they won't, they won't scratch you in case you run up against them. Okay, this is the finished product. $17, about a half hour's worth of work, if that. Uh, could be done with all hand tools or at least uh, you know, a hand drill. Uh, notice the tip. I just, uh, come on, focus, God, basket. Yeah, I just used that on a grinding wheel. Uh, that I have and uh, it came out okay so for that kind of money with that kind of time now we've got a pipe pole that was definitely good enough to use when testing ice thickness and strength.